Okay, so this is the high poly. This is what I actually sculpted in ZBrush. And I would say probably about 50 to 60% was made entirely in ZBrush. Now, uh, most of the time, I'll make an entire character in ZBrush. I'll make top to bottom, just all spheres, and just sculpt it. Crazy. Which, which I love to do. Um, this one, though, I wanted things to be a little bit more precise because she's beautiful and clean. And so I brought a lot of the metal parts in the max after I had initially sculpted it and retopped it and then brought it back into ZBrush and sculpted it. So any metal area that you see is part max, part ZBrush. One thing that's crazy I think David always underplays is there's no texture maps on there, right? That's just poly paint. Yes. David poly paints like a machine. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with Z, is anyone not familiar with ZBrush? Okay, so ZBrush is a, a high resolution sculpting program and as character artists, it's basically our, our bread and butter. Uh, and especially at high res, the majority of us will make a character 100% in ZBrush and then use Max to make our low res and whatnot. Um, in most game studios, and especially some of the studios I've worked at, people will sculpt something in ZBrush to create the high res and then texture it like on a flat, like where they're basically painting on their UVs and Photoshop. Um, but I've always really enjoyed poly painting because poly painting is very much like painting a resin model kit, where it almost feels like an airbrush or a paintbrush and you can paint stuff. And David easily at the studio, I mean like we do a Google Hangout at work and when David poly paints, nobody gets work, work done because they're just watching the other screen watching David paint. He's like, what material are you using? He's just like, just painting. Just painting. Just painting. Like, I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, it, it's really, so really is, impressive. This is ZBrush, and you can sculpt in here. It's, it's a lot like traditional. So if you're good at drawing, you're good at sculpting, you'll be good in ZBrush. Yeah. And, and really, that's what I think we should all focus on if we're trying to be character artists, is the art side. You know, if you want to learn a little bit about the, the technical side, dab in that but try to be more in the art side because that will carry it much further and anybody can be taught how to use 3D Studio. Anybody can be taught how to... Yeah! <laughs> Besides Some me. people need a little bit of reinforcement. Besides me. No, that's... Uh, it's kind of scary. It is. It is scary. I, 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 I think David... Maya too. Yeah, I think David makes a really good point with every studio has totally different tech. Like, I didn't use 3ds Max at all when I first started a high res. I didn't use Unreal. I always used proprietary tools. And, you know, if you make good art, the studio you work at, you'll learn their pipeline. Like, it's not expected when you get to high res or any other game studio that's walking the door and it's like, all right, here's a character, six weeks, it better be in the game. It's like, no, you need to learn their pipeline, what works, what scale is this character at. So, but if you, come in and it's like, oh, I can't make good art. I just made this blobby, noodly dude. That's much harder to learn. Yes. Yeah, like you can take a couple of weeks to learn any kind of tool or art process, but what really takes a lot of time is the fine art, like learning anatomy, learning proportions, learning color and theory, and all these other things that have to do with art creation specifically. And if you have that, then you can go to any studio, any program, and get through the process and create good art just work. So, um, as Brian was saying earlier, with the uh, poly paint, this is without any shadows. This is a flat material, and a lot of times I'll actually go into ZBrush, turn it to this material, and work solely in it. I can't see any lighting information. It's just we switch to this. That's one hundred percent what you diffuse with low light. One hundred percent diffuse. Like this has no shade value. If you look at, if I switch materials. See, it's actually like a shaded object. You go flat and there's no surface. It's just flat. So that's what I use to paint these up. It's so fun. I think that's really good because a lot of people have the problem where they're like, they'll poly paint and do their textures on like the basic material. And the basic material inside a ZBrush uh, has lighting information, not baked into it, but you can manipulate the light and it'll change and, you know, it has like a little bit of AO baked into it so you can, when you're sculpting, it's great to see that, but then when people export out uh, their polypaint information, they're like really confused why their texture map doesn't look like what it looked like in ZBrush. So, 
I mean, this is the first thing I learned from David, and it's been crazy and valuable. It's it's awesome. Get rid of that distraction. So here's just how often you guys are having constant crazies or music rush or deception. So I can get constant. That's a trouble to speak to that better than anybody. Um, honestly, pretty rarely. I use a little bit of 3D assistance, but for the most part, that's for doing things um, that are hard surface and require very specific kind of uh, proportions. Um, in which case, I usually jump to 3ds Max. But I know a lot of people who have used ZBrush for concept in other situations and in other studios. Um, Brian here, I know, has done quite a bit of that in his previous work. When I left Sony, like after uh, God of War Ascension, where I was a, a senior character artist on that, when we this. Uh, the next thing they're working on, I moved over to the concept <laughs> team. And uh, if you go under, actually, if you go under high res, or actually just go back to Brian. Go under sketches. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of sketch stuff that's going to be at the bottom. Sketches. And lost your head too. So this will kind of go along with what you're saying and it will kind of lead into something else. Uh, you, I'll let you do this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, at Sony, what I was doing was 3D concepting art, and that was, so I went to Art Institute of Atlanta, and I always wanted to be a, a concept artist, but like never really focused on drawing or painting. I was working as a makeup effects artist when I was in school, and I was always sculpting, and that kind of led me to ZBrush. And when I was living in LA, the film work I got was because I could sculpt quickly in ZBrush, and film has really used a lot of 3D concepting. Uh, I taught courses on 3D concepting in LA, and almost any film project now, you have to have 3D concepting capabilities. Um, and games were slowly catching on with it. I think some studios were hesitant because concept artists felt like they were having to do the character artist job, and then character artists felt like concept artists were trying to take their job. But one thing that works really well at high res is like we're all one team. We don't look at it as separate departments. Our job is to make a believable and a fun character to play as. Um, so to kind of talk about this character a little bit, one thing we do is during lunch, we do these things called lunch crunch. And it's basically just continued education. And some of the guys that work right now are doing, you guys are doing like anatomy studies. So, and like what I have right there is, um, I always want to focus on just becoming a, a better designer and sculptor. And I'm obsessed with characters and making, like I said, my goal is to make characters that are believable and uh, portray a story and a feeling. So there's David's example. And you guys have done quite a few skulls, right? Yeah, we're, we're really starting to learn. Uh, we want to do head to toe, every single bone in the body and then do every single muscle out to the board. So it'll be probably like a year long process. When we started out with the skull, we've done probably three or four days of skull training. And uh, it's basically like a realistic weird science. Yes. It's not a brain inside the skull. Uh, I don't know, we, we could... Uh, we could he sculpted nerves <laughs> inside of the teeth. Use the clip curve. I'm just really stubborn and just want to make monsters because I really like Ray Harryhausen no, no, and Ray no, Baker. No, 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 he's, he's not intelligent. No. Uh, I made this in about 15 or 20 minutes. Like, we, the whole point of it is like speed, but learning at the same time. Yeah. So. so what I did for this guy, uh, and this is how I would concept, whether it, if, you know, we've talked about doing more 3D concepting at high res and this is primarily how I work. I use a, a function in ZBrush called Dynamesh where you can just take a sphere and literally treat it like clay. So this literally started off as a sphere and in 20 minutes I could have a, a fairly you know, detailed character. Use some alphas, I pulled up, I'm obsessed with Pinterest. Like if, I did like David, I hope you get poly painting from him and if, if you get anything from me, I know you're gonna be like, what a cop out, but it's Pinterest. It's not just <laughs> for your mom and like your wives to pin cookie stuff, but Pinterest is amazing. It's really because like I'll have on this hard drive just tons of information of like going online and collecting photos and reference and I'm kind of a reference Nazi where I just build the stuff up and it, for me I have to absorb things to then apply to my art. But then you get home and you go to your, your tower and the reference there is different, so I was like, should I use Dropbox to kind of have them be the same? But I was like, oh, I just have this website. I don't have to download anything, and I can pin it. I can follow other artists' pins that have similar stuff, 
And it, it's because I noticed like in class that I've taught when I'm like, all right, I want you guys to gather images of salamanders. Everyone just goes to Google and it's like salamander. So then I just get 30 of the exact same Google images like creatures. <laughs> and I think, well, maybe now if I'm saying Pinterest, all of you are going to go to Pinterest and then we'll all get 30 Pinterest characters. But it's it's a little bit broader scope of a, a of gathering reference images. Um, it sort of organizes it for you. Yeah, like you can make folders. It's everyone's like always really hesitant when I'm like Pinterest guys. It's awesome. They're like, oh, I think that's for crock pot recipes. I don't <laughs> think that's like a legitimate artistic tool. Uh, but it's pretty awesome. Uh, I guess enough with rambling. I'll show you a little bit of. So I just I just finished this. So we we're kind of even like I I don't know how what I'll be able to show with being the new guy. Uh, I'll let you. Uh, all right, I'm not touching it. Sorry. Once again, don't learn tech, just learn art. I don't know how to touch this matrix like that. Okay. So this was the um, the concept that I was given when I first started at high res, and this is the Roman god Mercury. Uh, this was done by. Not being the sun. You're depressing way of answering that. Well, okay. uh, it's, yeah, it's true. Uh, so <laughs> this is Mercury, and he's pretty straightforward. But the interesting thing for me is uh, we have Mr. McGill in the back, one of my instructors from Art Institute, who taught me uh, Maya. Uh, and then I went to uh, I went to a studio called General Giant. They use Maya. Went to Naughty Dog. They use Maya. All right, I'm fine. Went to Sony. They use Maya. Okay, cool. Sean, our art director, was like, hey, would you like to join High Res? I was like, yeah, sure, all right. And uh, I bamboozled him, and I got in the door, and I was like, oh, I'll start, I'll start breaking stuff. And the first day, uh, ZBrush, like something was wrong with my license. They're like, oh, you can just go into Max and start building your base mesh. And I was like, oh, uh, I don't use Max. And they're like, oh, okay, so for the first day, it's literally just watching 3ds Max like YouTube tutorials, and then like we have a library of videos. I want to make a cube. And like after, yeah, like literally it's like learning the viewport, and I'm just like, and like they still laugh at me at hang out when I have to go in, because it looks like I'm like totally hammered, like moving in 3D space. It's like, it's like, so I was just like, learning, and then I was like, you know what, like I, I have a lot of experience with ZBrush. I've taught a, a lot of ZBrush classes, and I was like, I can build that whole thing in ZBrush. So the next day I got a license, and uh, they're like, "Oh, so what are you gonna build in Max?" And I was like, "Oh, I've got some tests and some R and D that I'm gonna do." do <laughs> with ZBrush. And uh, I was like, "I'll get to the Max stuff. I'll get to the Max stuff." And for like six weeks, I just like never opened it and just built everything like 100. percent And uh, we did. We found out some cool stuff though, because like everyone is testing stuff as well. And when I kind of said it, they're like, "Oh, well, yeah, we'll try that too." And so one thing for me that's really important with doing a character like this is see how he has this like golden trim. Uh, for me, like all of this should be modeled out. I like everything to be in the high res. Nothing should ever just be done in the texture. Yeah. When you look at, um, maybe we can navigate to. Uh, look, I'll show you some of these other images. That first day too, I gathered images once again talking about surrounding yourself with knowing what you're building. I just basically went online and googled images or like. Pinterest and Google and wherever found images like coming from studios that were a little bit more realistic. I was a little bit worried about hitting some of the style, so I grabbed a few things. I looked at actual sculptures of Mercury. This wasn't crazy helpful because he ended up not being a naked dude in the road. We have a lot with the Greeks and Romans. Yeah, actually, yeah, you like, look at it. And you're yeah. like, I it must have been free. Yeah. They were <laughs> probably quite chilly. So basically, yeah. I tried to look up these images, and then we can go back to the next order. It, it was just images of leather and stuff like that, basically, and Centurion Armor. If you go to renders, and let's go to the high res. Alright. So, and we can zoom in on this. This is what the high res, and if you'll notice, like, everything is in the high res. And I mean everything's in the high res. Uh, you know, there's like little metal bits that are on um, embedded in the leather cloth that he has. And another thing that I also do is if you notice, you know, this leather cloth and this leather piece of armor compared to the metal uh, that is kind of going around these leather bits here, I want you to be able to tell what every single material is before I put texture on it. Because I feel like people <laughs> see a deadline and get rushed and 
kind of overlook things, and if it doesn't feel like metal here, like this, I could have taken even, I think I actually, I have a, what's over here? Yeah, like a close up. You can kind of see it, they're not the most high res images, but there's even like little dents and dings that in all honesty would be like two pixels in the final math. But for me, it's important that when I show art directors and I show people that are looking at this, that it's not like, uh, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's like, oh, oh, I'll take care of that. Every step of the way, I want it to be approved and not like, oh, I'll take care of that. I, I, I promise, we'll get to it. Uh, so that was a pretty important process for me. Um, but yeah, this guy was honestly 100% built in ZBrush. Every single thing you see. This is the um, the in-game model. Uh, we use 1K texture, and it's just one texture with. Um, you know, everything, or one texture set, you know, it's got normal. Uh, we, one thing that was different for me is we don't have a slot for AO, so we we bake our AO into our diffuse a little bit. Uh, and that just kind of helps, you know, for example, with a character like this, you want the helmet to feel like it's, it's casting a shadow or that this area, you know, has AO in it. Otherwise, if you don't have that, it just looks like there's a light inside of his helmet. So. Uh, baking in a little bit of that light in there, you can kind of see um, just underneath that little shoulder pad piece how it's a little bit darker underneath there. Uh, another thing that I would say, just to kind of give some advice, is also notice how there's AO like on the inside of the thighs or underneath the arms. You look at, when I paint diffuse, I try to put gradients in things. Like if you look at your arm, the top of your arm is darker and almost kind of like, especially like if you're a dude, you got like a hairy arm and you stick your arm out the window, that's gonna be darker and the underside of your arm does not see as much light. And the skin, if you actually feel it, it almost feels semi-thinner, kind of like there's a change of surfaces from the corner of your mouth to your lip. So all these little things that seem minute, having that in there creates that sense of believability in the character. Um, and kind of, talking about production with David the same like how they changed um, yes. the character. Actually, we can maybe show the wireframe. That's yeah. the wireframe. I usually am not crazy clean with my wireframes, to be honest. Like, you know, David's wireframe, the wireframe was incredibly clean. My thing is, every vert and edge serves a purpose. If not two, one. It should either hold the silhouette of the high res, or it should be there for deformation. If you have a vert or an edge that's not holding a silhouette and it's not helping the character to form, it's not needed at all. Um, but so like there's even certain things like uh, the pack, you can kind of see like I'm, those vert edges, the only reason they're there is to hold the silhouette of what was there. Like it's a little leather pouch, it's not going to deform. And I actually uh, used in ZBrush, they have a new tool called Z Remesher that basically kind of like calculates based on the shapes that you have sculpted in. It'll make I, I, like a, a smaller <laughs> mesh. And we've tried it like, uh, like the poly count's much lower, but if you are like, it, it's funny, you always tell people this, you know, it'll make my game meshes in an hour? That's fantastic. Uh, you yeah. tried it with an eagle, like what happens? Yes, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you, okay, so. We, we started using it, and, and it was giving us okay results. And then I tried it on an eagle, and from one tip to another tip, you would double to collect on the uh, edge, and it moved all the way around to the other edge. Yeah, so like spider. And so our rigor was like, no! <laughs> I can't deal with this. Give me a new one. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just very quickly. This is, this is my first character, and speaking about that iteration is, I was fairly happy with the way he came out, but one thing I kept noticing coming from God of War is like I feel like this is a stylized, almost like more fantasy version of a Centurion. Because we had quite a few of those in the last God of War. And through the whole process, things were being approved and it was good. We had it in game for a decent amount of time before it shipped, but when it was released, I don't know if it was just time, everyone, we all kind of looked at it and were like, he feels like a Centurion. <laughs> like any. The big thing with the way we create characters is everything should feel godly. And you should always want to play as that character. 
So that's like our intro videos. To me, they're incredibly important because it's like a trailer for a movie. And we've all seen trailer for movies that you're like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. And if you see a trailer for one of our gods and it's just like, I don't want to play as that. There's two obvious reasons. One, the first one is, well, we're a business and we would like to make money. And if people aren't buying it, then we've made a big mistake. And then as an artist, if you make something and no one wants to play as it, then I'm going to cry. You know what that means? I'll feel alone. Um, so we actually, and this is the another very big difference coming from uh, console games is we'd work on stuff for years and be hidden and then release this game and then just all go on vacation and either hopefully it did well. And there'd be DLC, but never going back to a character and changing anything. So when he was out and we were all kind of saying that, I was like, oh, I guess we'll learn next time. And they're like, oh no, you can change it. I was like, what? <laughs> Since we have patches and updates and all that, and at first I was kind of really bummed out about it. I was like, oh, because you work on these characters for a while and you're like, I don't ever want to see them again. <laughs> but then, like I'm saying, you have that feeling if you want it to be good, having that capability to go back and, you know, David and the other guys are really helpful with that, um, that we're going to go back and kind of change stuff and make it feel more godly. And I, it, it's cool, too, watching our live streams and like Twitch TV of people playing because our, our well, like most gamers are very vocal on what they like and they dislike and it's cool because you just get instant feedback and whether it's on animation or the way a character looks or I, I definitely feel with our game most of it's who's overpowered or yeah. I've quickly learned like quick, this is OP or nerf this and, and I'm just, I'm an old nerdy guy, so I don't understand. I was like, oh, we got Nerf guns in our game? <laughs> this, this game is amazing! <laughs> uh, but it, it, that, having that instant feedback for me is, is, has been really, really, uh, really exciting, and it's something I've never experienced. So. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think I can um, speak maybe a few things about kind of the process and say about it. some things um, maybe that he was talking about are just as applicable on the concept then. Um, Brian was speaking a lot to sort of the importance of having reference. That's absolutely something that we do from the beginning all the way through. As much information as you could possibly get about the god, about the position, about that society, about their lore, about the materials that they're using, and everything. Have it open, have it in front of you, put it together, and it makes the work that much better. Um, one thing that you're doing always is kind of um, using the concept as a method of internal communication. Is this going to be an idea that's going to be okay with not just the person modeling it, your art director, but with other members of the team, potential overseas partners, uh, and with the ultimate players? So anything you're creating, you want to bring it to a level of polish and a level of precision that explains what you're trying to do uh, very concisely, very uh, correctly, so that when you bring it on to the next phase, it's going to be in a good place. Yeah, I don't think you ever want, and especially like, you know, working in concept and having worked in 3D modeling, your stuff is going on to someone else. Like, none of us are ever like, I built Mercury. And technically, I, I built Mercury, but that character is not mine. There's X amount of people that are involved in bringing that, that character to life. But you have this internal, like, friendly competition or drive because Brian's going to do a concept and he doesn't want that feeling of it passing to me and being like, oh, I got to make this piece of crap. So it's always like, oh, dude, this is awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, and I'm excited. I'm going to build this. And then for me, it's like, all right, this has to go off the rigging. And you don't want rigging to be like, this is awful. Yeah. Or then when you go around and you'll see animators animating it, you don't want them just being like, dude, I cannot wait to not look at this character. <laughs> <laughs> so in being on the art side, it, it's super important inside the studio. While as much as you, I feel design and gameplay is, is very important because it's inevitably, it's a game people are playing it. For me as an artist, if something visually does not look cool, I won't even, I don't care how good the gameplay is. And I'm sorry if there's any Blizzard employees or big WoW fans, but like, I never played WoW because I always saw the cinematics. And I was like, that looks amazing. And then it was like, all right, check out WoW. And I was like, that does not look like the cinematic. <laughs> Why do I want to play that? And for me, I was really excited when I saw that our videos are all real-time, in-game trailers. It's not like, hey, we're going to contact Blur and they're going to do a way better version of your character. It's like, I'll bamboozle Sean on 3DS Max, but I don't want to bamboozle gameplay you know, to, to customers. So.
the earliest point. Uh, so I have the newest version of Hades, like that was the character I worked on, uh, so the one that Brian designed. Hey, there you go! Yeah, I did a thing! <laughs> 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 Um, so, I've used Max for a long time, like I, like before I went to school, like I played around with 3D Studio Max, so I, like it's the most comfortable program for me ever to use, like more than ZBrush, more than Photoshop, like I use Max for everything almost. Um, and something that one of our other artists, Saman, uh, did for one of his characters was he modeled the entirety of his character, like he laid out the base mesh, he modeled all the large pieces in 3D Studio Max. Um, and it's something that I want to do because it looked really interesting. He had, uh, yeah, like it, we, this was right after like we decided to go with Tencent. And one of Tencent's requirements for art was that uh, we had everything more realistic, we had it more clean, it looked less cartoony. Uh, and the result that he got, and I think he started this process with, uh, was it Guan Yu? It Guan Yu, yeah. yeah. That he modeled everything initially in. Uh, yeah, the the minutes. yeah, all the parts, all the cloth, like even with, down to the cloth clothes, he modeled that all the max. Yeah. Uh, and so there I watched guy with his process was like doing that same thing for Hades. So I modeled all of the ribs, I modeled all of the, the like all of the root parts, uh, like all of his bone. I had that all initially in 3 d CO max. So this is kind of my first foray into trying this. And I did this again with uh, the next. <laughs> I know, I, I kind of want to talk about playing on the case. I kind of want to break NDA. Who wants yeah. to hear some stuff you can't that's, hear? That's the other thing that makes it a little difficult. Is like, since the game is is constantly putting stuff out, you'll, yeah. we apologize if we're like, oh, and oh. No, yeah. wait, that's not <laughs> you'll know about But that. it would blow your mind if you knew I guess that's exciting. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. We'll yeah. see more of it. More but like I did that. I had ads in that week. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's coming on Tuesday. You all see this, and you'll we'll like think back stuff. and be like, "Oh, right, that's what they were mentioning." Yep. <laughs> so from there, I like took Z, like I took all the DDS Max pieces, like piece by piece, and I put it into ZBrush, and then I just went in and like sculpted all of the additional areas. Um, and I wanted to make every little, like I wanted to make him kind of look very dinged up because he was Hades, he is the one of the dead, he is um, extremely like evil. So I just took, did as much as I could in ZBrush to make him look like he's decrepit, like all of his armor is like old, and, uh, but still make him look very evil. Uh, did this fall the break? Uh, it did for the most part. Uh, the only thing they changed was they lifted out the skirt to make them taller. Awesome. Do you do you want to talk a little bit about that? So, like Mercury was a new god for me, so I didn't have really any restrictions other than make it look good. Yeah, make it look cool. But it, yeah. I think these guys can talk about the differences between a, a reskin and a new character. Yes, that is it. not as pleasant. Because with, with Tencent coming into the picture, there have been certain gods like this that have been redone. Yeah, he was kind of unique. Because he's only a reskin for the Chinese regions, and for America, he is, America and Europe, he's just a skin that you can buy. Like, he doesn't replace the original. Yeah, there are uh, sort of interesting international concerns um, about gods that you wouldn't necessarily expect when you first made them. One thing that's a big deal in the Chinese market is you can't really show skulls or bones. So anybody who's familiar with the pre-existing Hades um, is made of skulls and bones. So it's not the way they came to me. Uh, and they're like, okay, we need to make something that we can ever show in China or we're not going to have uh, Hades over there. That's going to be a problem. So it was kind of a, it was a complex iterative process on this one. We went through, honestly, dozens of different versions over the course of a month before we were able to come up with stuff that was agreeable internally and externally to represent this dot. Um, 
but it, it had certain basic requirements. We were going to use it as a skin here, but we were going to use it as the main and really only version in China. So it had to ride the same rig. We didn't want to remake any animations or anything like that. We had to avoid the bone thing. It couldn't be too creepy, but we had to be creepy enough. So there was a, a lot kind of going on here that had to be met before it even got over the modeler's desk. Which, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny because it's actually, I think, more grotesque than yeah. the original 80s. Yeah. Which, <laughs> they were in love with this one. They picked it out of like a lineup of completely different concepts. They walked by and they were like, you're making this one. <laughs> Aren't there like also what? some color? Like how you would say gold or red would be yes. regal here? For, or like royalty and godlike, are there color palettes that differ overseas than they do here? There are, um, and sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different, and it's not always in ways that you would expect. I think the same as in American art, there are always exceptions to okay. kind of what you would expect. One thing that's um, kind of very important is uh, there's a little bit more status consciousness in Chinese society as a whole, I would say. Um, so they tend to like for the characters to have a more kind of layered regal feel. Yeah. He's going to see a lot of uh, precious metals of gold and other things that weren't necessarily always present on our gods before. Um, it was okay for us uh, previously to say, yeah, this god is just kind of you know, raggedy or grotesque or something, but this guy has to be raggedy and grotesque, but also look like he's got hand-me-down um, precious metals that he's just wearing all over himself for whatever reason. Wait, this guy? Hmm? This guy? Yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, something I really liked was like something I referenced for the materials when I, after I did the poly painting, and this is the base poly painting that I used to start the texture with, uh, was I referenced uh, Dragon Age Origins character, like one of their enemies, like the Ark Bishop, I think. It's been a long time since um, But they had a very, like they had a very regal look to them, but they looked like they had been sitting in a crypt for thousands of years, and it's a, that's something that I tried to communicate with the metal as well. So yeah, this is the poly painter is the flash hater. Yes. Yeah. Similar to what David was showing you. Yes. Mine isn't as detailed as David's. Do you do a decent amount of uh, Photoshop painting as well? Um, kind of. Like, I use the poly paint as a basis when I can. Um, but I mostly, like, I, I supplement a lot of that in the details, like the, the fabric and the gold I use overlays in Photoshop. I'll do additional overlays in the normal map in Photoshop that I won't do in ZBrush because that will require me to subdivide the model a ton. And yeah. Yeah. It's just very difficult to use, like, when you get a cursor in multiple things. Yeah, there, I agree. There's certain things for me that are a lot easier. <clears throat> to overlay a photo, because even if I'll, I'll sculpt leather, I we have a, a file folder of like old leather backpacks and like this super old leather football that if you look at any of the, I'm gonna infuse it into a Smite as well, but all I got of Wars leather was just this old volleyball that was like peeled back. <laughs> and uh, Mercury Oz leather is the same. Because you can use a different diffuse, like the color of it and what we sculpt, but if you overlay these photos, um, like when Rashad's talking about, there's certain natural things you're getting with a photo. As an overlay, you're getting those happy accidents that if you were to like hand paint that. Like, do you do any photo overlay for any of your concept um, stuff? Or yeah, occasionally I use a little bit of that. Yeah, um, because I have to deform it a little bit actually around the character, and I'm trying to get very accurate in that way. It can be difficult to find photos that accurately describe what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. Do you like a sign? Exactly. We're tired of JPEGs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like this is my uh, wireframe for Hades. I, yeah, this is like the in-game mesh. I don't necessarily have a very clean style as far as the uh, the polyflow goes. It kind of just depends on where I need. Yeah, like I'll have a lot of polygons here and triangles because I know that I need to keep these forms. Something we try to avoid is using <coughs> the maps um, for the characters. Yeah. It, it doubles the amount of memory for the uh, texture when you do that. Yeah. In Unreal. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're adding an alpha channel, but literally you can import another texture with RGB information 
and it would be the same amount of information. It's, and it also looks mediocre. Yes. I would rather have sculpted hair and cloth elements or modeled in elements like that, which is very clear and reads, than like a uh, alpha map from like 1999. Yeah. Well, our sculpts have, uh, we always keep a very kind of sculptural feel. Yes. So it totally makes sense to have that kind of. Uh, well, I think so that's why we, that's why we did that. Like that kind of path, we had to follow it in that kind of guideline, so that kind of directed our art style. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's a better feeling anyway. It, 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 uh, it makes it feel like it's ancient Greek sculptures. So that's yeah. With, with paint on it. The awesome thing is the scale of the character. The character is, it's very easy, like when you're in ZBrush, especially to have it up. I think some of these guys made quite a few jokes that I was sculpting hangnails. <laughs> on my characters and stuff like that. Um, like I said, it's important for me to all that stuff to be there, even if you don't know it, you subliminally get it. But in all actuality, one thing I do a lot is look at my character from the back and about this big on the screen. Um, so I'm constantly zooming in and out because it, you could have the most like perfectly sculpted eyes, but if you're not zoomed, if you don't see it from in game, then what's the point? And then this is how the model looks in Unreal. Um, we have the materials in Unreal that combine all the different textures, and then something we do is we use uh, different mask files. Or we use one mask with uh, each of the separate RGB channels in grayscale to delineate which elements get what kind of specs of shine, which elements uh, get uh, certain colors. Um, and something we've recently started doing was we use one of those channels as a gloss map so that uh, the cloth, the metal, the skin will each get a different level of specular highlight on them. Did you um, render a light for the missive in there? Or was that hand painted? That was hand painted. Awesome. Um, I forgot. Thank you. Thank you for your I was super nervous about that. Like I thought they had all these crazy setups for that are like jewels. I was like, do you have like a, a crazy cube map or something like that? And, and like, all these guys are like, we just paint. Yeah. We're just really good at painting. Doc goes here. So I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, we painted the highlights. <laughs> yeah. It's lies. Material. Lies on top yeah. of lies. Lies. Material distinction is very important, not only in the sculpt, once again, that this is leather, but this is uh, cloth. But you know, like what we're start saying, if like this all had the same amount of specularity, the metal would feel like metal, and then the face would feel like metal, and then the cloth would feel like metal. But you can see, like Lashad did an awesome job at the parts that are metal look like metal, parts that are cloth look like cloth. The parts that are like that kind of fibrous, almost hair down at the bottom of that one cloak, yeah, like that feels like a different material than the armor elements. Look at these uh, spikes too; they're all. Crusty, Gross, yeah. Shiny, like slippery. <laughs> <laughs> we got like 15 minutes. I was talking to you. Yeah. Do you guys want some show? You want to show? Or do we want questions? What did you, you guys want to do? The you guys want questions? <laughs> yeah. How much time do you guys spend? Uh, it, it varies. I'd say uh, anywhere from three to four weeks, depending on the complexity of the character. Changa, uh, I had three weeks. And then the revision, and then another four weeks. So <laughs> that, one, that one took a long time. Is that like every step of the process, or is that just modeling? That that's the entire um, the entire process for me. And then the animators have to animate it. It has to be rigged. It has to be uh, particle effects. Yeah. And videos have to be done for it. And all of that stuff. One thing we do, so it's not like people are waiting, is we make. Uh, I've heard it called gray mesh or pre-rig where essentially you'll get a concept and within the first few days your job is to essentially uh, have a, a just a, no textures, no sculpt. I mean, it could be like in ZBrush you rough the proportions out and it could just, the edge loop doesn't have to be, it's just literally like a puppet doll of what your character will become. Uh, so that way animations can be made and then uh, the rigging uh, the TDs can copy weighting and animations over from that pre-rig onto the final mesh. Um, so. Yeah. Um, 
when you're, okay, you had a group of people who obviously came up with a concept for the game itself. Did they storyboard, did they approach you with like a section or a, a concept piece of paper and say, this is the God I want you to work on? And how much difference was there between the, uh, the rough concept versus you guys actually coming up for the concept for what would, it would actually be? Uh, you follow me? Yes. Uh, no storyboards. We don't have storyboards. Really? What we do is, um, what we, whenever we have a character like idea that the, one of the designers comes to us with, uh, we'll send it off to a concept artist, or Brian will do it, and they will in turn generate a series of thumbnails, and then we'll uh, pick out which one of those thumbnails fits the character best, like what we want to work on, what would be cool. Uh, okay. Or we'll combine and mix and match some of the elements so that we can get the character that we want out of it. Uh, and then once that's done, like we'll make a yeah. finished version of the concept art, which is like so, so you get this, and, and this is the starting, and they're like, okay, make this. Gotcha. And then I start to make that, and if there's any revisions, you know, you may get this uh, a week or two or three, or you'll be done with the character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they'll be like, hey, uh, we want to add this stuff. And then you're like, okay. Things jump back in ZBrush and start, you know, re-sculpting it or changing whatever. But, yeah. How do you uh, how do you guys manage to keep track of like the storyline or anything? How story? Well, this is. I think you're getting a few production elements mixed up. As character artists, our job is not writing a story. Yes. And then also okay. in Smite, there's not a storyline. It's uh, a MOBA, so it's basically like an arena that characters are battling in. Gotcha. Think of it. Well, I don't even want to use like WWF because I'm sure they know storylines and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, do you use saying. storyboards at all for anything? No. So it's, <laughs> it's more of a, an arena, but even on past games that I've worked on, there's there's a writer. And a writer handles the story element. And basically, uh, a, a game development team is a watch. And one part does one thing. And okay. is we're very specialized. Like, we don't animate, we don't rig our characters. The fact that some of us do concept, and like Brian used to do some 3D modeling, is a plus. But most game development is incredibly specialized and know to do their aspect of their job, and the, the cog or wheel next to them knows their wheel in and out, so that all of these pieces together come up with something. Uh, and there's producers overhead that kind of manage everything and help see that. Um, but one thing, as far as you're saying with the concept, to answer the question about how much does it change, yeah. um, I've always thought as a character should never be locked in at all. Meaning that like we'll be given a concept, and for the most part we follow it closely, but there are certain things that might be incredibly detailed, that at the scale of our character it would chatter. Like yes. Mercury had these like extra little laces on his boots, that when the character was that small, in comparison, the shape and value of that object to how small it was, it would be blurry and noisy. So we'll kind of like self-edit stuff like that. Did you get a back view of this character? I did. Okay. <laughs> I have it, but yeah. Well, some of us will sometimes request back views, not orthographic, like perfect views, but a front or back view. Uh, but we have done just a front three-quarter view, and you know, you'll kind of make up the back. It depends on the artist and, and the time. And from what I've noticed, there are certain gods that there's a very specific idea of what somebody wants, and then there are certain ones that's kind of like, this is the idea, but make it cool. Yeah. I mean, as, as a concept artist, you try and, if you can, predict some of the most obvious pitfalls that people would run into if that thing left your desk. Like, the modelers couldn't make this, or if it got to animation, the animators would kill us. Uh, or this is just technically impossible, yeah. uh, which is why you don't make or pretty shatters. translucent tentacle jello monster alpha or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I was hoping for Cthulhu, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you try and uh, you give sort of the best kind of proofed version of a concept that you think is going to make it through and be interesting for everybody, but at the same time, they know more intimately the actual model and the technicalities of it. They know what they're going to be able to get out of the UVs and how they're going to make it work. So once a concept leaves my desk, um, I'm still available for support. Yeah. If any, you know, yes. any other my life, I can't figure this piece out. I need other people for this that one. A lot. Yeah, that yeah. that happens a lot. Where we'll work on something and it'll either be unclear, like a strap goes around a certain way, or they've got this and.
sometimes, like I know Saman did that recently, where mm -hmm. one of the other character artists kicked back a character. Like, did he give you a 3D view of the character and he painted on top of that, or what, what was that process? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not exactly. If there was one or two times that you just kind of painted, or even like with for myself with Mercury, with we know we want to update him. I literally, this is a super old school animation style. I printed out that concept on copy paper and I got sticky notes. And I laid sticky notes, like if you look at uh, feature film animation, they'll do this with drawings where they'll say they like something. They just lay a sticky note over the areas they don't like and redraw that area. And literally it's like a flip book because you can take that sticky note and flip it back and forth. So I redrew costume elements and was able to just, with my <laughs> other art director, just be like, before, now. Yeah, it, it, it'll be really common, really common, um, that at some point somebody will want to paint over something. Whether it's a concept that came in from externally. And we don't, um, one of the downsides of people being external is we don't have as much hands-on, face-to-face interaction with them. We may only have a few touch points of communication along the process. So it tends to be more common that when we get the final concept there, there's still some work that has to be done to actually prove it based on the knowledge that we have of Smite that they don't necessarily on the outside. Um, so it'll be very common for me to go in and do some additional sketch work or some additional paint overs before it goes on to the process. Similarly, they may be modeling along and say, hey, I have a great idea. Is this something that you could uh, sort of proof out for me and see if it works or whatever? Uh, and then I'll jump in and do that as well. Uh, I've worked at places where like concept artists are uh, like super, or the, that mindset of like, this is my character, you're building it. And this uh, dude would basically be asked for a screenshot of your character similar like to the pose of the concept, and then Photoshop would lay his concept over it. <laughs> and like, if it was like, uh, like a millimeter off, like anything, he was like, you gotta change it. And it was awful, it felt so stale. And a uh, character is literally like a baby, okay? I got a two year old, so this, Analogy can only go so far. Uh, uh, so with this baby, you know, there's someone that comes to Brian with this story, and Brian's bringing it to life with drawings and paintings, and then it's given to us, and it's you know now an adolescent, and we're growing it in 3D, and then the animators are going to do stuff because when the animators get it, like one thing with Mercury is when I first made him, I was watching Judge Dredd, the new one, while working on it, like, an on it. so he was just constantly like. <laughs> And everyone, all of us were like, oh, that looks pretty badass. But talking about stories, some of the producers and animators, when they would make him smile, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, like... And then, too, one thing that changed was they're like, oh, he's like like 20 or something. Like, like crazy young. And I was like, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that, that process of letting this thing develop is so much more healthy than being like, that is a millimeter off and it's gonna be exactly this way and it's just gonna feel stale and dead and have no life in it. So uh, we're really lucky that we have that that mindset. One thing I think too that's important to me is uh, to kind of talk about our team is I see these guys more than I see my two year old. So it's really nice and that's not like we work crazy hours, but the average person, if you're at work from 9 to 5, then you're home and whatnot. It's important that you get along with each other. And we don't necessarily like go out for beers every day, but like you work with each other and you're both striving as a team. If there's one bad character, that reflects on all of us. Because you guys don't play the game, like I don't sign my character. Or it's not like you win as Mercury and it's like credits, uh, you know, so good at this. <laughs> so if there's one character that looks like crap, we all look like crap. So one thing that we have here that's awesome, and I I'm glad it happened, like my first day, people where I'd be working and it'd just be like, what's up? And you're just like, oh, okay, oh, okay cool, this is where I'm at. And we constantly are getting up and looking at each other's work. Uh, and suggesting different things, try this, or hey, I learned this tool, or I have this brush you can use. Um, and then that goes into the lunch crunch, and it's still fairly new. We've only done it, like I've only done two. Um, but we're starting to do these lunch crunches more. Uh, we just, we review concepts, and this is awesome. Other students I've worked at, concept has their own lead and their own essential department, but Brian being concept and Max being concept are uh, just essentially character artists as well as in 
we're all making a character and it needs to look cool when you want to play as it. And uh, we'll go into a meeting room together, and even when we get stuff from outsourcing. Like I've had art directors in the past that you don't get any say on that stuff. But like even our cards, when a freelancer does a sketch for a card, we're all called into a room and get to sit down and review it. And at first sounds like super quiet. So I was like, am I just supposed to sit here and just be like, yes, this is a thing you have made. But then like everyone started giving legitimate feedback. And it was part of that more of that idea of like letting it grow. It wasn't like one person being like, this is how it's gonna be. It's my way or the highway. So everyone gets a say and um, it's it's good. So uh, yeah. Yeah, you have to, you have to level up with each other too. And it's not how many of you are students? Okay. So one thing I kind of thought is like you 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 get a job and it's like, all right, I made it. Now what? And then it's like, oh, I work with a bunch of beasts. These guys are insane. And everyone, almost everyone I know does personal projects. And even like Rashad, like Rashad went to school with each other and he was always doing stuff outside of classes. And then in class what he was doing was awesome. So that kind of goes along with that not wanting to be the weakest link. And then we're a team together. You all have to, to grow together. And then two people have seen stuff before, and it gets bored. Like we have videos you can go online, and there's literally like, I'm sorry, I keep referencing uh, Sean over here, art director, and handles a lot of environments. Uh, from when the game first came out, right when I was coming on, Sean showed me a video, and it was literally something we showed to the public where it was like old versus new, and it looks crazy different. And I was like excited to come here first, and then I saw the new video, and I was just like, yes. Leveling yes. up, that going to a studio and working with people, and in those of you that are students, so at AI we had this downstairs area where you could play Super Smash Brothers and eat oh, muffins yes. all day. <laughs> and yeah, that was really awesome, and that's cool, but I surrounded myself with the guys that were up in the classroom and bugging Mr. McGill and bugging Elio, and constantly like, I never saw Rashad playing Super Smash Brothers eat muffins. He was always, as a computer working. And surrounding yourself with people like that, you're going to get better. If not, have fun with Super Smash, I guess. Yeah. I love love, but not. I'd rather be a better artist. <laughs> Which, to me, it's, it's not it, like, yes, you have a life and you have a livelihood to make it, but if I was on a, a deserted island, I would be making, you know, coconut and pigeon or uh, like parrot poop character art. <laughs> I think that's a cool thing. Is that, yeah, it's a new medium I'm introducing. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. You have this drive, and it's that, that thing that I think everyone on our team has that. And other artists that I know in the industry, they all they all have that. Like when I first started working, I, I came in on the crunch of Uncharted 2, and at like 5 o'clock, I was like, alright guys, thanks for a great first day! And they're like, where are you going? I was like, I gotta go home, I got laundry! And they're like, yeah, you'll be here till like 2. And I was just like, what? <laughs> and at first I was like, this sounds awful, but then the more you started to work on something, you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna stay late, and you'd be like, oh, you don't have to crunch, and it's like, there's things I want to do on this because I, can, I know I can do it better. And that passion shows in the art. You can tell a lot of games. Like, has anyone seen that Rambo trailer for that like the next gen Rambo game? There's a reason you haven't seen it. One that game is like 20 years too late. But you can tell it's just about that like I guarantee there's and I'm sorry there's like one guy in the back who's like I worked on that game. <laughs> but there's no passion in it. Like no one was like I gotta stay late and really make sure that I get you know, that weird a face, you know, it's just, um, <laughs> this is a job, this is a thing, I'm done. So, sorry, I, I get on the soapbox thing about passion because I talk to a lot of students and I think a lot of them are just like, oh, I, I just want to get the job and then I'm good, right? I know you stay up late, I know you stay up late. All these guys, like, and it's not staying up late because they have to, it's because they want to. I go, I, I've been obsessed with dinosaurs recently. And I stayed till oh, yeah. 2 a.m. making dinosaurs because I'm a giant nerd. <laughs> That's why I have this thing. Yeah, and then, yeah. I can sit on my couch and actually sculpt on this. 
he was just saying before he got started, he's like, I'm getting rid of my tower because I figured out how to hook this into my Cintiq. <laughs> you can see this dude on his couch with a big old Cintiq. <laughs> I'll soon just be like the dudes in Wally, -E, like in this chair. Yep. <laughs> All hooked up to it. Yeah. You guys have more questions or? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, surface. Surf pro. pro. Gotta get pro. We'll get the RT and scrap. Just the water. Are you guys looking for the new Wacker series that are coming out? They're supposed to be? Uh, Have you looked at that? Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah. But, uh, it's it's 25,000 dollars. Yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, 500 more. My one thing is, for me, and this is not knocking those, but for me too, I draw a sculpt and paint with my shoulder. So I have, uh, because otherwise when I'm like this, everything gets like, <laughs> so I'm able to make, I, I, but I've tried the 24 HD one, one I don't have a table as long as this in my studio, because it's like the longest thing, you're like, all right, I gotta make a line. <laughs> have my two year old run down the line with it. <laughs> and that's, that's another thing too, is like, and I, I appreciate questions about like what type of things people do. But I remember like going to studios and being like, uh, how do I, like, do you, are you guys left-handed or right-handed? Did you, like, no one, he, you said this to me the other day, you go, I don't care about your process, just make it cool. Just make it cool. Yeah. Yeah. No one, like, I agree. no one cares. If you could make something cool out of macaroni art, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. So yeah. start to, and I, that's one thing I think for me when, when I became a student to a professional, is when I learned to just test whatever. And then it was weird because you'd start to do stuff and you post it online and people would start to like it and then you'd see people trying that. Or like the other thing is like, hey, can I get your brushes? And you're like, oh, it's it's not like I just have a like, you're like a, a make God's brush. <laughs> I mean like yeah. the brushes help and the tools help, yeah. but it's yeah. really the skill and the practice and the technique that you've developed over time that is what gets that effect. Yeah, there are no bad brushes, just bad brush users. Oh. <laughs> 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 is, does anyone know uh, a guy named Anthony Jones? Anthony Jones is a, a he's a pretty big concept artist at Blizzard, and everyone is always emailing him like, "Give me your brushes, give me your brushes." So he took a photo of a baby and like scaled it down. It was like a clip art of like a little baby, <laughs> and just painted this like insane concept. And he was like, "This is my baby brush." <laughs> Stamp, and it was like he could take that stamp and just make yeah, cool brushes. Yeah. I made a demon out of rubber duckies once. Yeah. Why the hell not? Yeah. 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 The tail is here. I love this. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. Uh, uh, our uh, lead character artist, I showed him this, and he played on it for about 20 minutes. He went out that night. Yeah. <laughs> what was the parchment? I think they're like thousands. They're like 800 now. Are they? So, yeah, and they're coming out with Pro 2 yeah, here or yeah. so. Like, so it's going to have 8 gigs of GDR3. It's going to be a monster. Yeah. You know, I, I don't really mind it as long as I can have ZBrush. You can download some because I got a laptop that Windows and I'm going to open it up with like. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like hit this and you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I literally have no idea how to even get to a program. And then I found the desktop and I was like, There's something that you can download too. Like, I, I search yeah. something that you can download. You can download the Metro. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, like, it's going to be easier. I'm like, oh. No! It's going to take so much longer to shut down. All right. We're good to go. Thank you guys so much for coming.